So cells, first off, are just the basic unit of living things. Everything living is made up of cells, um, including us, including the plants. And there's many similarities, actually, between our cells and plant cells. Uh, they all contain many organs, just as we contain different organs that have different functions. Within each cell, there are different organs, many organs, called organelles, that each perform different functions within that cell. And uh, like I said, there are many similarities, but a few of the important differences that are relevant to this presentation are that plant cells contain a specific kind of organelle called a chloroplast. These are where the green pigment in plants is located and where the natural green pigment, not the fast green <laughs> that we're using, but uh, it, it's where the, the green pigment's located and it's where photosynthesis occurs. Um, and the next, um, also important, is that plant cells have a cell wall that surrounds each individual cell. So in order to kind of visualize these differences, we will do a quick comparison of a plant cell and an animal cell. Uh, during this, this time, you can guess which one you think is a plant and which one's an animal. Uh, it shouldn't be that difficult and is probably going to be easier when I put some labels on it, considering plants don't have livers. Um, <laughs> so we'll start with the animal cell because it's probably what we're more familiar with. It's what we contain. Um, so you can see there's a plasma membrane, which is a um, malleable, kind of like a sac, a living sac that surrounds each cell. The reason I say living is because it actively um, is involved in bringing materials into the cell, excreting materials from the cell, um, as well as transfer, or receiving res um, signals from other cells, et cetera, et cetera. So that's what surrounds each animal cell here. And then in the center, this one I should also mention is not stained with fast green or saffronin. This is stained with, if you're curious, uh, the, the pink here is eosin, and the purple is uh, hematozylin, which are stains not really used in botany. Um, but they're convenient because animal tissue is pink, so we've got a pink stain. Um, but in the center here, this purple um, sphere is the nucleus. And this is important because it is the control center of the cell. It's where the genetic material is located, the DNA. And so it controls all of these cellular processes. When we move over here to a plant cell from an Aztecium, we can see we've also got a plasma membrane that surrounds the cell and does a lot of the same things that the plasma membrane would do in an animal cell. Um, basically all of the same things. And we also have a nucleus in the center as well, or kind of off to the side, I suppose. Um, but you can see one major difference is that the plasma membrane here is all kind of shriveled. And the reason that is, is because we're actually not super concerned in a lot of plant anatom anatomical work with the plasma membrane um, or really the cellular contents. Um, so we use what's called a coagulating fixative to preserve the tissue, which basically causes the living part of the cell here uh, to just shrivel up. What we are more concerned with in plant anatomy are the cell walls. We can see them here um, labeled. The thick, even though we've the, the living part of the cell is shriveled up in here, we still have some nice, thick, rigid cell walls. So because they are so important, we will talk about them in a little more detail. Thank you.